and welcome to Murphy's Garden. And first of all, I just want to say a big thank you for the fantastic response from the last video about Woolerton Old Hall. I'm so pleased that a lot of you said it's really helped you um, in thinking about the design of your own garden. And it certainly has helped me just to kind of crystallise ideas um, things that I've been thinking about for a while and just how I can put those points into practice in our own garden to try and help improve the design. So thank you to all the existing subscribers that we've had since the beginning, since the inception of the channel, but also welcome to lots of new subscribers who we've now got joining the channel. And just a little brief intro, the channel is called Murphy's Garden. Uh, this is Murphy, he's our dog, and um, he is the, um, the boss here, and he supervises all the activities that go in in the garden, oversees all the projects. And, and even christens the new areas as, as we build them in his own special way. Um, so Murphy, um, Murphy's just by my side all the time. Um, whatever I'm doing, he's always here. Um, he's getting on a bit now, but um, he still enjoys being outside with us. So today it is actually the coronation of King Charles. It's very exciting um, and we've got a lot to do in the garden. And so I don't think we're gonna be sit sitting glued to the TV watching everything but we will be listening to it on the radio and I think King Charles an avid gardener himself would approve of me spending the weekend shuffling manure because I think it's something that he would um, recognize as very important so we will dip it in, uh, in and out and, and watch things um, as they progress but um, what could be better being ruled by a gardener if only the whole world was um, ruled by gardeners I think the world would be a better place so I think he'll make a really great king. Um, so back to jobs so up the top part of the garden um, we've put in the um, the trellis uh, the trellis and um, we've moved the trellis from which was in the quadrant garden um, we enjoyed that for the period of time that it was there and it certainly served to divide the garden up well um, but we just felt that the plants were growing on well we didn't need it anymore um, and also one of the main reasons for moving it is because Alistair has designed a new kind of work area that he wanted up the top of the garden um, and he puts, drives his van in, he needed a hardcore, um, a hardcore area, um, somewhere to bring um, stuff home from work that needs to be shredded and things like that. So um, we've got the compost heaps up there. So it's a, it's, a, it's a functional space. It's not always kept that tidy. It can just be a bit of a dumping ground. So for that reason, we want it to be screened from the rest of the garden. Um, my idea was to plant a beech hedge, um, a copper beech hedge, but um, I think the problem with that is that it would have taken a long time to grow. So we had a bit of a running debate as to what we would do. I wanted to put in trellis. I didn't want more trellis because I thought it would look more like a prison and we all crisscrosses everywhere. Um, and he agreed. So after much debate, um, we have decided to move the trellis that was already in the garden and repurpose it up in the top of the garden. Um, so we want to reuse that because it's still quite good. It's not rotting, it's nothing wrong with it, So, but it did look very scruffy. It, we painted it white um, because it was a reflection of the crisscrossy Georgian windows in our house um, and it was more of a feature. So it was looking quite scruffy, it was getting a bit mouldy in places and a bit green. So we've pressure washed it, cleaned it all down and I started the process of painting it with a little brush. I was averaging about one side of one piece of panel. It took me about an hour so I thought well this is not going to work because I had about 13 panels to do so I'm going to be here forever. So poor Joshua unfortunately came home to visit for the week and got roped into um, helping. So he volunteered to spray the panels, um, which worked much better. It got, he got good coverage. Unfortunately, um, he used about three quarters of a tin of paint for one panel. So again, that wasn't overly um, successful. So then he came up with a system where he staggered all the trellis up against Alistair's um, shed. And that worked really, really well. He got good coverage. He hasn't obviously done the bit along the top and some of the bits got a little bit missed. Um, but um, that can be done with a brush quite easily. So Al has been busy over the last few weeks putting it up, putting it all in place, which he's done. It's looking nice and you can instantly see that division between the two parts of the garden. It's looking really good and it does give that instant, um, instant height and instant division. So the next job is for me to move the roses. So the roses were growing up the trellis 
and he did do a video not so long ago on how to um, tie in and cut back um, climbing roses. Mine aren't tied in, mine are all flapping about, so they do need to be moved. It's not really the best time to do it. It should have been done in dormancy really, but they don't really have much choice. And I noticed that um, David Austin is still selling bare root roses. Well, he was up until about a week or so ago. So I hope that I can still get away with it. We have had quite a lot of rain, more rain to come. So hopefully the ground is quite moist and um, will um, it will be okay. So got that to do today. Um, the problem up in that area is that we have got very, very sandy soil when you dig down deep. So when Al was putting in the post, um, when he dug down, he pulled out the auger. It's pure sand. It's like building sand. In fact, it just looks like a, the contents of a child's sand pit. It's quite incredible how sandy it is. So that will definitely need to be addressed. It's not sandy sort of higher up, but it's just very low down. So when we dig out, we're going to have to dig out big holes for the roses and really backfill them well with lots and lots of um, compost and manure. So I did mention to you about the soil in this area and I just want to show you what the issue is. So most of the soil here, it's, um, it's okay, it's, it's, it's sandy, um, it's not a lot in it, um, there's a lot of stones, but it seems to be relatively fertile, it's similar to what it's like in the rest of the garden. So I think with a bit of compost and a bit of manure that will be fine. But um, what Alice has found when he's digging these um, posts in very, very deep, when you get very deep, this is the stuff, and you wouldn't believe this, but this is the stuff that comes out. Can you see that? It's just um, pure sand. And in fact, when I compare it, which I'll just go and do. So here is a bag of um, building sand, which Al's bought for doing various projects in the garden. But this is our sand and this is the building sand and it's absolutely identical. In fact, we've wasted our money buying bags of sand we don't need to. And in fact, they do, um, there is a um, place that extracts sand near here. So that's why we could, we could start selling this actually, sell mining rights to um, come and get sand. So that's what we're getting. So it's really quite incredible and that's a bit of a challenge. So we need to really address that and remove some of that certainly where we're putting the roses because they will absolutely hate that so we'll have to dig out quite a big hole and backfill it with all this lovely um, farmyard manure and um, we needed lots of manure so we went to visit mike the blacksmith who also has some cows he's got lovely little calves that have just been born and he said anytime i need manure just to give him a call and um, we can come over and pick some up so we took the trailer over and we picked up about three tons of farmyard manure so that will be fantastic for our roses so that's another job i need to try and get done perhaps this weekend so all in all we've got a lot to do and as you can see here alistair no time to waste um he has made a start on cutting the grass because the grass is getting very long and as we are um, forecast lots of rain today he's just taking the opportunity to crack on with it before the rain comes so we've got lots to do and i'll take you with me as i'm doing different jobs and just show you where we're at so i'm getting on quite well i've done three of the pieces of trellis and all it is is this trellis which is you can see it's just a little bit patchy it's not too bad but it's just a case of going around with the brush and just touching up and um, just making the colour look a little bit more solid so getting on quite well I've been listening to the coronation which is beautiful and Alistair has been accompanying it to the choir on his strimmer which is a bit annoying because I can't actually hear much of the commentary because of the noise of the strimmer but anyway we're doing well um, and Murphy's on standby with his ball just to distract me with a bit of ball throwing. So it's now Sunday, um, got lots done yesterday. I've been painting the trellis, I've got to about this corner. Um, Alice has put the balls on top which just really make it, really make it look nice. Um, he's also sanded the archway, it, it was a bit, um, I don't know, the paint wasn't adhering to it very well so he sanded that down. And the other thing to say is that um, he sunk these very, very deep these posts um, because it's a very windy garden and we have had in the past trellis coming down when it was in the other position so I really want to get them in well so he sunk them down quite deep 
and um, the post he's also wrapped with um, this kind of um, I don't know what he calls it but a bitumen wrap it comes on a sheet and you wrap it around the post at the point at which it's going to be in contact with the soil and that seems to work quite well we didn't used to do that but we have started doing it and we find it to be quite good it just means you just extend the life of the post a bit longer so that always helps so Al's going to go around and just add a little bit of more cement around the post the top of the post and when I finish painting and he's done that then I'll start bringing the manure in and um, ready for the rose planting so we're getting on quite well this area is a bit of a blank canvas behind me but um, if you can try and imagine what it could be um, we're going to put lots of trees lots of shrubs and um, we sort of had the idea this would be a kind of winter garden an area of interest in the winter months um, trees which have lots of seasonal interest and look good in those months of the year um, did make a bit of a start I've bought a few things um, We've planted some things in the, the sort of first part of the border, including an Acer Grisium, and that this year is just looking beautiful. It's absolutely lovely. So I'm really glad I got that because it's put on loads of growth in, I think I've had it about two years now or 18 months, I don't know, something like that. But it's doing well. I've got Calicarpa, we've got a lovely Viburnum, we've got lots of Cornus and uh, uh, Dogwood, Winterbox, um, Mahonia the Coralus and all these different plants so we want to extend that collection all the way up to here so that's quite exciting and we'll be getting ready to plant in the winter and autumn months. And the other thing that we need to do um, so in the design video that we did last week we talked about having um, punctuation so perhaps two trees either side of an entrance into a new zoned area you know a different area to let you know you're passing from one area to another um, and we talked about layers, adding layers of interest to, um, to the garden um, and also providing vertical height just to add extra interest to give a bit of height. So one way of doing all three of these points is to have trees either side of a, of a pathway going into a new area. And we had that, we had two spiral, lovely spiral trees that looked really, really good. Um, you can do this with evergreen trees and um, we did do a video on um, 10 I think it was 10 or 12 of the best evergreen trees and then I also did another one you can do it with deciduous trees so there's also a video on uh, the best um, deciduous trees to plant as well so that's worth looking at if you think you're trying to think what to plant so um, we did this with um, some spiral cypress trees and they were looking good however after a period of time they started to um, one of them started to die we had problems with the pot one of the two wooden pots that we got one of them was rotting well, actually both of them were rotting a little bit but one completely disintegrated and, and the tree also died so um, that was a bit of a problem because it ruined our nice symmetry so we've removed the tree and we've we actually put that in a new position in front of what was an archway which we've now <laughs> since removed but anyway that's another story I don't even know if it's in the right place but we moved out the way and that place is now clear and um, what we need to do now is to put in some new trees so I don't know about you but I've always had issues with um, pots so when you get um, pots are very expensive to buy it's a massive massive outlay um, like some of these beautiful like terracotta pots and stuff you know they're I don't know, they're like 400, 500 pounds. Um, and if it's the difference between feeding your family or buying a terracotta pot, I'm, unfortunately, I'm gonna to have to feed the family. So can't justify that expenditure. So I needed to look at other alternatives. So um, I have got um, a blacksmith, local blacksmith, who I've got to know recently. And he did some work for us last year. He put in some, he, he made us some metal edging, which we installed, and that was a big, big success. Um, Mike can make all sorts of things. He's really talented um, and really good. And so I showed him a picture of what I wanted. Some of you may have seen the Bunny Guinness video. Uh, Bunny Guinness is a designer here in the UK. Most of us in the UK know her. She does um, Gardener's Question Time and has done that for quite a few years. She's very, very knowledgeable. She does a YouTube video um, videos on and gives away loads and loads of really good design tips and hacks and things that uh, I've learned loads from her videos so that's worth looking at and she does a video on bottomless pots and um, so I decided that that's probably the way to go. We did see some bottomless pots when we went to Erthig um, as well we saw the Prunus lusitanica um, surrounded by wooden um, pots and that's quite a good way of 
stopping them rotting is just to, to do it the way they did it. But also if you get um, bottomless pots, the big advantage is, is that um, plants after a period of time being in a pot, they run out of steam after a while. Um, they run out of nutrients. Um, you have to keep, keep them well watered and fed. Um, but sometimes they outgrow the pot. The way to get round plants, if you want to keep a plant in the, the same pot for a long, long time, the way to get round that is to so take the plant out of the pot and cut the roots off by about a third and then repot it. And that will really invigorate it um, and it will give it new soil for the roots to grow into and it will keep it curtail the size and stop it, you know, trying to bust through the pot. So that's a really good tip. However, I don't know if you've had this problem, but I have. A lot of the pots that I've bought in the past, I, you can't get the pots, you can't get the plants out of the pot. Some of them have these kind of lips like that on the tops. So you're trying to get the pot out and it just won't come. Um, I had these fiberglass pots that were like that. They looked quite nice, um, but when I tried to get the plant out, it just broke the whole, in fact, I've got one just there, can you see? Um, they're fiberglass ones and I can't, the, the pots, those box, um, that are in there there's no way I could get them out they're completely stuck in there so you know what would you do so eventually they'll run out of steam that's why I'm looking at doing bottomless pots so bottomless pots are good if you don't want to have to um, keep repotting them because when you've got a really big tree it's quite physically difficult to 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 keep potting on every three years and you don't want to keep putting it in a bigger pot so um, I needed I need a better and longer term solution so the bottomless pot seemed the way to go. I asked Mike to make me some using um, galvanized steel which he's done and they've come back and they look lovely they're very big um, I will have to I'm going to just um, take out a bit of the box hedging in order to slot them into their position um, and we also need to take out the hard core and the, and the path that's underneath so that will that's a bit of work that needs to be done and, and that way then the plants can go down and seek out moisture and nutrients in the soil beneath. So that's another project that we need to do. But before I get to that, I will do a video on that when we come to do it. But before we get to that, I need to treat the pots. So the pots are, um, as I say, galvanized steel. So they're quite shiny. That would look good perhaps in a modern garden, quite industrial and, you know, they look quite nice. Mike says that they will fade over time they will take on this you know a duller kind of appearance over time with weathering but um, there is a process that you can do just to speed this up and make it kind of blend in a little bit more and again um, Bunny Guinness does a video about um, metal I'll put the name of the video on here but metal in your garden um, and she explains um, how to get this look so I'm going to be doing that this weekend as well just preparing these pots for um, just to get a, a better finish that we want for this garden. And then, in, and then we will also at some point be planting out the pots as well. So there's loads to do. So this video is just gonna be doing, catching up on lots and lots of jobs all around the garden and we'll see how we get on. We've got a three day weekend. So I'm gonna go and get my gardening gear on. I don't know if he's fallen asleep. Oh, you see, he's fallen asleep. Um, I don't like to disturb him. Oh. Anyway, um, so I'm going to go and get my gardening gear on and we'll get to work. So I'm just at the front with the two pots. Um, this one I've treated um, and I'm really, really pleased with the effect that we've got. So we've got this kind of, well, I think it's like a lead, lead look. So it's lovely dull metal, kind of gun metal look, as opposed to this, which is um, galvanized steel and it's very shiny and, and Mike did say that I mean, it does fade over time and we did see um, like a planter that he'd they, they use it for um, you know the um, cattle troughs um, around here um, we've got a lot of farms around here and you do see them and they do look a kind of dull color more like this color but it does take a while to get to that color and I wanted the look straight away because I am impatient so um, so so I have um, treated this um, following Bunny Guinness's advice on um, her video and I'm absolutely delighted with the result really really love it it's just what I wanted so um, we I'm not going to show you how I did it on this video we'll do a separate video just so that you don't have to watch all of me gabbling on about trellis and things um, if you just want to see how to do this so we'll do that in the next video but um, that's that that job done I've got plenty more to do. I've just got to do the same on this one, which I'll video and I'll show you in the next video. 
It's now Monday, so we've had a productive weekend. Um, we had a beautiful day yesterday, it was really sunny, so that was perfect for painting the trellis. So I've painted all the trellis, um, it's looking solid, it's fantastic to be able to repurpose something, recycle something that was looking a bit scruffy and it looks as good as new and um, it's given that instant height to the area and makes me able to sort of visualise what this area could be. We have got a plan uh, which we've drawn out, we've had that for some time of what we want to do in this area um, so it's quite exciting to start to see the um, plans unfold. Um, and, in, and that will happen in the, you know, in the coming months, maybe you know, six months or so. So that's good. Um, Alistair has haunched the trellis really well with some more cement just to make it really bite and really stay firm because it is a very windy area. Um, the site, as I've said, is very sandy. So the plants that we're choosing, I did do the video on best deciduous trees and shrubs and that was with this area in mind so I've already sort of selected a lot of the the plants that I want for that area and we're choosing them to be suitable for sandy soil in full sun and um, and also to tolerate wind as well so that's what we'll be choosing um, always best to choose the right plant for the right site and location and bear your soil in mind however that said I am planting roses which really is not the best choice for us here on sandy soil they're not they don't really thrive in this in this um, soil however I have had success with them in other parts of the garden and I think the key is is good soil preparation for us it won't grow naturally well in our existing soil so the key is is to keep adding lots of um, fertility in the form of manure so um, that's what my intention to do that today really because it's wet and it's just so we just want to get on and do that I did make a bit of a start and dug a hole um, it was really hard going and I was just pulling out loads and loads of sand and stones and really not very nice stuff at all so um, had a chat with Al and he said look let's just leave it for this weekend let's not rush it and um, we'll hire Brian's digger and we'll dig a big big deep trench which will then fill with um, lots of compost we've got loads of compost now and we've got all this manure as well so we can really fill this whole trench up and then the roots can go right out and into good um, nutritious soil so I'd rather not rush it and take our time and do the job touch it once do it right so as I'm not spending the day planting roses as I thought I would be I'm going to take this opportunity to catch up with a bit of weeding because um, because we've been doing all these kind of big projects a lot of the maintenance jobs have kind of been um, we just haven't had time to do them so I'm going to spend the day doing that you can see behind me that all the lush green growth everything's growing at such speed we've had the rain and we've had the sun so all the supports that we put in only a couple of weeks ago you can um, barely see it now so Thank you very much for watching and join us in the next video when I'll be showing you how to get the, um, these lovely pots um, quite easily, how it's, it's a very easy thing to do. So thanks for watching and join us in the next video and don't forget to like and subscribe. Bye for now.